discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome to Fat Nasty Nerd Run Throughs, and today we are doing top 10 two player games that are best with two player couples games. It's, it's, it's two player games. So I have with me John and Brad. You guys, you probably saw them in the top 10 games of all time. That was a fun one. Got a lot of compliments on that one actually. A lot of people really liked it. This is all from you. You have different accounts. Yeah. Man, this group's yeah, great. Exactly. <laughs> it's hey, I mean, yeah, I was like Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love that skinny guy sitting next to the host. That's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, we're going to start off with an honorable mention. Um, yeah, since this one isn't going to take that long, let's go ahead and go with. We'll have you start with right. your honorable mention. My honorable mention was Nations the Dice Game. I have not played that. I can't even find it. It's out of print right now. And I, <laughs> okay, that's one. Which, you know, that'd be one we could definitely play. But <laughs> it's, um, if you've played Nations, it's long, 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 long civ building game. Is it as long as Through the Ages? Yeah. Yeah, but, but the, dice yeah, game drops it, dro the dice game drops Close. it down to 35, 40 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, and it has a solo variant too, which is really good. But you're just pretty much buying tiles and you're building a dice pool and you're just building your stuff. And, and you can have, it has the same dynamics where you can have a leader, an oddball leader leading your, you know, you be Egypt and have Abraham Lincoln be there. You know, so it's a blast. Okay. So, with, yeah, with Nations, now, we, okay, between, have you you've played actual Nations? Yes. Have you played the new Through the Ages, a new story of civilization? I actually haven't played Through the Ages. Okay. I've played them both. Yeah. Nations and Through the Ages. I got Nations from you. Yeah. Okay. I've nations heard Nations. Plays in about is, two or three hours. Yeah. Through the okay. Ages it plays in about six. six. Yeah. <laughs> the dice game is just. I liked so Nations much a lot. Okay. But it just took so much to teach people. And it's out, like I said, it's out of print right now, but right. there's an expansion coming here in a couple months, and it will... They'll probably ready. just come back in print. All right. Oh, by the way, guys, we're at uh, the wonderful Changing Hands in uh, Joplin, so if you're ever in the area, check it out. They're awesome. They will let me record here, so... Um, we so get here every Friday, every much. Friday. Don't tell them, because I, I may have enemies. <laughs> and they're going to be like, uh-huh. He's here every Friday night. What was your number one talisman? We're going to murder you. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So my honorable mention, um, and the game we were just playing, I'm actually really sad. It's not on my list. I didn't even think of it. Uh, but my honorable mention is probably still tell, Tales of Arabian Nights. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be strictly two players, but I think it works really well with two because it's not really a game. It's an activity, so you just sit there. Like the board is just atmospheric, really. You really could pull that storybook and just read to each other, just be like, oh, this happens to you. Um, but my girlfriend really loves it. I think it's a wonderful couples game as well. Like, no, it's not cutthroat at all. To where if the person, your significant other, is like sensitive in any way, you're not gonna get upset if you screw them over because you can't. You can just have a better story than them. But no, my girlfriend absolutely loves it, and we have a, b a blast playing because it's just whimsical. And and I mean, at the end of the day, we're like, oh yeah, that was that was a great story. And then and then we're done, and that's it. Really, I don't know. I don't know if you would like it. I mean, literally, like, there's literally not much <laughs> to it. I think like, it's like a story, isn't it? Like a storytelling. Yeah, story yeah, it has like 2,500, 2,500 stories in the book, but you're, you play Aladdin or, or the characters in, like, the Tales of Arabian Nights. Mm -hmm. And you just need to get a certain number of points that you pre choose. So you can have, like, you need to get 10 story points and 10 destiny points to make them back to Baghdad. And that's how you win the game. But everything's completely random. It could just be like, after this, you, oh, you get eight destiny points, yeah. and it's like, all right, I needed story points, so. But the stories are, are a blast, and there are times. So this time I got married, and then I went to like the under. I went to like Atlantis, and I married a mermaid, and it's just like <laughs> I was totally cheating on my other wife because I was like, it's with a mermaid. Why wouldn't I? She doesn't breathe air. It doesn't count. <laughs> I can't do really I can't, nothing. I do with her counts as sex. <laughs> so there's no way. Just ask go play. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, legally, anything I do is just kind of sex anymore. That's Futurama quote. All right, all right, John. My number um, 11, my yeah, honorable, mention honorable mention, was claustrophobia. Boo. No, I've never it's, played it. That's what I want. Really I good. Bad. I really enjoy it, but it just didn't quite make it above the other 10 on my list. And it's pure two-player. It's a dungeon hack and slash. But Tom Vassell hates it. 
That's because so it he it's doesn't like it because it's set in hell, basically. <laughs> oh yeah, the, it's one person plays Also, Satan, the, like the character names either. don't have specific names. It's like the Redeemer and like the, yeah. the Victim thief. One. Yeah, it's like it's it's very dark, but it doesn't like dwell on it too much. It's just it's fast paced. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a great two player dungeon crawl. Right. Yeah, there's not a lot of those actually. The like, all Overboard, the dungeon crawls. Like the the dungeon player just chucks a handful of dice and they match the dice numbers to these different abilities on the chart. They have like the big demon or the big monster that has different abilities on it. The miniatures are pre-painted and they look great. Oh, that's always nice. I know. And uh, the tiles are nice and thick. Everything with it. It's got these neat little dashboards for the characters. Really unique um, hit point mechanic. It's just you it's, find really done. it's out of print. I don't yeah, know. They have a copy here. Do they? Really? I just saw it a second ago. All right. All right, so now let's actually get to the list so we're not cheating anymore. All right, so my number 10, actually I've revamped this list so many times because I started playing more and more two-player games and I was like, oh, we gotta redo it. So I finally waited until I was like, okay, I, I think I'm good. Uh, my number 10 is Arkham Horror, the living card game. Uh, and surprisingly, I'm, I'm surprised I actually even like the game because I don't like LCGs. Um, but John introduced me to it. And you know what I think? You, I think what it is is the fact that it's it's campaign driven and it's quick enough that you're not like it's it's drawn out yeah. and each everything changes. It was your wasn't it your number one? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So you're like yeah, it's fucking great, son. <laughs> um, so with it, one of my favorite parts is your deck thematically changes and like you start out with sanity. If you make choices throughout the campaign, that affects your character. I mean, you don't have to play with the same character. You're like this guy chaos sucks. bag will change too as you go through the longer campaign. Oh, really? And as stuff happens, your chaos bag will get altered. Oh and it's man, not for the best. No, I mean, why would it? Why would it be? You know, the it's game's super the hard, and for for being a card game, it does like it does feel like Arkham Horror. Like yes, yeah, very very well. The theme and the feel. Now it's well. nowhere near better to me than Arkham Horror, like at all. But I mean. For for what it is like the three scenarios that you get and how how much it is, it's it's awesome. I, I had lots of four hours to set up. Like, right. <laughs> actually, four, four hours. That's to actually play. about right. Whenever I I because I played with you know like the three extra boards, I played with all the expansions. It took me like three hours to set that game up. And my six foot that Chad now has filled up it filled up the whole thing, and I had to get a separate table to put all the cards on. It was it was a bad time. But. <laughs> Oh, I loved it, but I, I mean, enjoy it. I just enjoy not owning it, so I don't have to set it up. <laughs> that's down. why I like the card game. Right. Just, just, just like with my, my honorable mention. Ten minutes to tear it version. out. Just throw it out on the table. Go. 30, 30 to 60 minutes to play a game, 10 minutes to pack it up. Yep. It's a great little game. Yep. Until you get all the all the stuff, then it starts being like, ah, oh, crap. Even with all the stuff, I've got it organized. But you do have it organized, right. But we're also OCD, and I'm, I mean, I'm an LCG anyway, so, you know, <laughs> I just, my dad. So that's my number, that's my number 10, <laughs> Arkham Horror LCG. Is it my turn, though? Yes. Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, is my number 10. I think it plays best at, at two players, because by yourself, I don't think you have enough brain power, and if you get three or four people in there, you just kind of start getting kind of cluttered and people talking over top of each other. So I think it's best at two, honestly. Okay, so let me let me tell you, I've played it as two. I've played it as one. It is not better with two because you don't have enough brain power <laughs> going into that game to figure it out. You certainly don't have that one. I love it at two. I you can sit there and bounce ideas off of each other. Right, but as at two you don't have enough variety to if, I mean, especially if you're playing with you know people that are close to you, you're probably going to agree most of the time. So if you're wrong, you're going to both agree that you're wrong. Because <laughs> I just actually played it with four, and we got an 85. Really? Yes. That's I've, the other two people were I like had sitting, five they, people sitting they around like, <laughs> playing one day, and we were just all talking and arguing over the top yeah, of each see, other, and it was a mess. Yeah, I mean that's just a bad group. Two is perfect where you just bounce that. off it's each other. So good. Because I watched you, you and your I haven't played that one either. You haven't played that one either? No. It's no. really good. You're I mean, I'll probably. Out. Oh, I'm sure I'll get it eventually. Yeah. Yes. Or just wait till one of us finishes it because we'll never be able to play it again. Right. Uh, we'll just trade it off. Yeah. But yeah. So they but they were like really reading the newspaper and getting into it and yeah we got an 85. Nice. And I was like I thought we were gonna suck. But that's interesting. I'm very surprised that that's on. I on love it at two players. All right. All right. All right. My number ten is Jaipur. Man, it's a nice your game suck it. <laughs> it is a small box little game. It's set collection, card drafting, hand management. It's and it's strictly two player. That's the only way it can be played. 
and you're just gaining resources, and then you're getting a certain hand, you're, you're paying those cards to buy to get these little tokens that have point values. The quicker you buy the tokens, the more points are worth, and so on and so forth. It's, it's just a simple little. You know what it is? I think it's uh, there are there are mechanics or themes that immediately turn me off, and and that one. Middle Eastern Camel Trader. Well, no, the mechanic is set collection, and that oh, sounds okay. boring as hell to me. Yeah. And it's then the other one, what were we were talking about, um, uh, oh, uh, Five Tribes was, it's, yes. it's Mancala. And I'm like, I hate Mancala, so it's why would I want to play it? The hand man, the, the, the set collection of Five Tribes, though, is one tiny little segment of it. Most of it is the meeples out of the board doing the actions. For Five Tribes? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the only set collection is just a little stuff you get from the market. Gotcha. So that's a very minor and piece the Mancala right? part of it is so tactical, it's not just like, Point A to point B. Right. So right. like a five by six grid. Yeah. You're having to just analyze. I mean, I need to play it. Yeah. To. It's, but see, it's, it's that, that's why I haven't played it because it's like, oh, I have all these people. One, one, one. All right, I get yeah. the, and it's like, no, I don't. Want well, it. and the thing is, is with uh, back to Jaipur, it is. I mean, you can get a game done in twenty minutes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's fast. Mm -hmm. You just go through, especially if all people know how to play, and it's. Right. Through right. It's just, it's and I'm and I'm and I'm trying to look into a lot of those a, a lot more because I usually stayed away from filler games and now as I've expanded more it's like it's like, one of the few games Fletcher could get his wife to play with him. Yeah, exactly. It, it's oh, like does she, she not play? play? She doesn't play board games very much, it's but like 15, that was one she would sit there and play two or three games of with them. Really, yeah, it's like fifteen twenty bucks. It's not bad. There you go. Mm -hmm. I know really Rado good. really likes it. Yeah. He talks about it a lot. It's top notch. All right, all right. John, start number nine. Number nine. Firefly, the board game, plays best with two players. Does it really? Yes. It, where's Robert? Where's Robert here? They can turn back. He's Any like, more players, and it bogs down so slow. Isn't it pretty I much a solo it. game? Isn't it, it pretty much it, you it, have your thing going until on? Until you get the one expansion. Right. But oh. <laughs> even with that one expansion, you really don't want more than three players. Yeah. I play it with but only, only, I, I only play it with four. I absolutely times, love it with long, two. But. Two, yeah. it's literally, I do my thing, you're watching to see what I do, you do your thing, I watch to see what you do, I do my thing, mm -hmm. and you, like, it really should be solo, like, there should mm -hmm. be a solo mode, but because the Alliance and the Reavers move around and the opponent is the one that controls them, okay. you kind of need that other person to go against you a little bit while you're doing it. Right. Is that yeah. an unofficial, or? It's unofficial, BGG. Right, right. But yeah. if they would have done like a little AI deck for the Alliance and the Reavers, you could play solo and it would play fine. Right, and I mean, those games where it's like, you, like near and far was kind of like that. Was I, I did my thing, and uh, the, like there's really no negative consequences to any of your actions, and no one could really, I couldn't go out of my way to kill you to take the treasures you have or whatever. The only thing was, I if I went to a spot, you would have had to try and duel me. And if I had lost, you just get to go to that spot. Right. If you lose, you go to jail and get a food. So it's like there's that's the only and I really do like those games, but which game is it? Near and far. Near and far. So, but because you were talking about how I, like you do your thing and they can't really fuck you over with that. It's, with Firefly, there's a little bit of that, especially with like, like merchants and like is, is it like or, like, like the Marauders I, expansion, yeah. pirates and it's smugglers, like, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm I'm thinking of the board. So like my thinking is like Zaya. So like, can you hunt the other person down? Yes. And, okay. And with that expansion, especially, okay. you're, you're trying to go you steal can, their goods. You or, can go steal or, their goods. Okay. You can go kidnap people off their ships. Okay. And stuff like that. I, I think it, I almost wonder if it's direct. Probably. Firefly came out first. Well, so the expansion. Out. Oh, the Marauders expansion. To know whether that it, I'm not sure on. Yeah, because it kind of based off of Zaya's uh, mechanism. You think that came out like 30 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I love Zaya. I Dude, just got I, the expansion for it. Oh, you did. Everything. Yep, that that's was what I heard. With it. That's what I heard. I mean, I liked it too, but it did have it's it's it was just the problems I couldn't overlook. But if the expansion fixes it, then it's a great game. All right, all right, Brad. Number all nine. Right. Number nine is a game you guys probably have played. It's from Fowers Games. It's a paperback. That was my favorite. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot about it. It's a little box, and it's it's almost like Scrabble, the deck building game, which oh dear god, good, right? <laughs> But anyway, what, what's your... <laughs> Seth's buying it right after well, this well, video. Much, John, you need to get it now. <laughs> I love deck what building you do is, is you set up, I mean, you have your, your deck, you line, up, you line out cards, and they have letters on them and point values and stuff, and then you start out with a basic hand of cards, and you, you're making a word, and however many points you get from that word, then that gives you points to buy stuff in the middle to add to your deck. The whole point is you're trying to get enough points to buy 
the publications. There's like books out here that are the end game cards or whatever. And it's one my wife loves word building games and stuff, so I mean I like of, I like Scrabble. I like my girlfriend and I we, we were playing words with friends mm -hmm. and like we were going back and forth in multiple games and I won every single one of them. But Well this uh, this is that just like Dominion style. Yeah but I hate <laughs> like deck building yeah. like I, I hate when it's done right, it's you, you, forget, uh, yeah, but you forget the deck building in this though because if you're like me, I, guess I don't have a very good yeah. vocabulary like my wife does. So I'm like busting my ass trying to come up with <laughs> and like, right exactly so, and duh. so like <laughs> so you, you really like Dominion. You, you're just buying points per card. You know, buying cards to get points right, to buy right. stuff. And this one you really have to take into account the letters because an X is an eight point card. Yeah, you can get that somehow put in a word. Let's right, more right. stuff. So I mean, you really don't think about the deck building as much in it. Now, do you play off of each other's words, or no. do you just play no, words? It's just strictly oh, okay. side to side. Yeah, I mean, it, it can play up to four. Okay. But it's really good because my wife and I would kill my daughters, and it, as far as that goes, but and she kills me. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? Why you played that word? You. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, get back in the basement. Nah, it's really good for. <laughs> it's a good morale boost for her too. Whenever I keep beating her on other things. Cool. Right, right. right. She gets to like murder. Like, That's okay, honey. You have your <laughs> word game. I have my strategy better than you games. Yeah, exactly. All right. So my number nine is uh, Mansions of Madness, second edition. It has to be second. First edition, it's great <laughs> with the Overlord. No, I love first edition, but uh, second edition is way better. <laughs> uh, that app, it makes it fully co-op. That's why Descent with the app is better than actual Descent. Yes. It takes away the stupid, like, the Overlord being OP and killing everyone, and then... Imperial Assault needs an Overlord app. They're getting one. Needs one. I, I, I thought well, it was supposed to be December. Comes, once that app comes out, I'll buy the game. Right. Um, but anyway, so Mansions of Men's second edition is fantastic. It, with the app, it fixes everything because they can be played solo. It's one of the few games I actually do play solo. But it allows my girlfriend and I to sit there and play any scenario we want and not have to worry about, you know, me knowing everything and, like, obviously anyone else not getting it, not figuring it out. We can both right. work together. And she absolutely loves co-op, so she likes to work with me. Um, mainly because it's me going, we need to do this. Okay, good. <laughs> and, then, and then we do it. Um, Who would have guessed Seth is an alpha gamer? <laughs> what? No. Um, and then we, the last game we played actually was the six hour one uh, that we did, which was a, a very unique twist on how it was working out. And she loved it and she actually did a really good, uh, good job. I think she actually ended up leading that one. But it has to be second edition. And they just keep, they're about to release another expansion for it, which I'm excited for. I still need to play the Beyond the Threshold. I have all of the comics. Do you? Right? Yeah, yes, I think it had like two or three, three more scenarios. The, yeah. the problem is, is that you can't really go, like, it, they advertised it wrong. I think whenever I heard about it was that you, they, the scenarios and the map will change, so you can play them more than once. You really can't. Like, like you, you, you really can't. Um, at least all the ones I've played were one time. It depends on, I mean, if you have, the monsters will change up if you have all the stuff. Like right. you have the other big box expansions. Yeah, I have, yeah, I have all of it, yeah. I've, the t couple times I've played that first scenario, they changed up a little bit. A little bit, but it was stuff. still like the end game was the same, which I guess that's how the first one was yeah. too. So uh, we just, there were so many scenarios for the first one that it, it never occurred to me. But obviously this one hasn't been out as long, but they're going to pump out some more, especially with the app. Well, and then... They, they, they're smart in that game because they have actually put out missions or scenarios you can buy in the app. That's true. Have, the DLC, like, yep. I went through and bought those as well. Yep. Stuff. So, I mean, they just keep infinitely pumping stuff out on the And I will keep them. buying them. Exactly. So, yep, that's my number nine, Mansions of Madness. Number eight. To me? Yeah. yeah. My number eight, I just changed and added to my list not very long ago. Oh, Mansions of Madness is also a great couples game. Yes. <laughs> If you guys have good couples games. <laughs> well, this one may not be a good couple. Um, I put Fire Team Zero. Oh, you just added it? Well, it was like a you couple just days got, ago. Yeah. We were um, and it'll probably go higher up that list just because of the what's fully co-op. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, yeah, I don't know how, how else. I mean, it's World, <laughs> World War II. Uh, Fantasy, kind of, you know, and and so these creatures are coming into an alternate reality, World War II era, and you're just controlling these four people and going through and 
you know, it's another hand management, which is different than like, you know. Your, I love your, hand your, management. Your cards, cards are used for attacks, and they can be used in response to help other people and step or defense and stuff like that. So, and it's just going to go higher up on the list after I get the expansions and stuff. Cause, right, right. You know, it's, and it's best with two? You think it's good with two? In, in my opinion, any co-op game can range. I mean, I... I can play co-op. I can put co-ops in. Like it would be high up on my solo list okay. because I played it solo. I played it with two. I played it with three, and it's it, it doesn't change. You know, and it's, yeah. it's such a. I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to think of games that are fully co-op that that don't work with two. Um, and I'm looking. I'm trying to think of my my collection. Arkham Horror doesn't work with two. Elder Tour doesn't work with two. Uh, Talisman doesn't work. Oh, that's not co-op. I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, huh? What? What is it? Games. Yeah, <laughs> right. I love Eldritch. I love. I like Arkham more and less in different ways. I know. I know. I go back and forth. All well, the time. and I think the reason this one goes is because it's different. Right. I mean, you'll, right. that's the first thing you'll notice when you play this game is it's not your typical. It's one thing about my tiles house. on the board. Go through and kill minis. Right. It's, it, there's different mechanics to it, and I think it's just new. Right. Right. The, which the which deal. is what you need because that's starting to get stale. Where it's just oh it minis is, to kill. Right. Right. All right. <laughs> it's done just totally differently. Okay. It's, yeah. We'll we'll definitely have to play it. My kids even I'm play it. I'm intrigued. All right. My number eight is a is probably the best couples game I actually have on here, um, and that's my Some Mystics. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played my Some Mystics. Tested. You play tested really? Um, I owned it for a long time. And never played it, to Robert. Actually, I played it. I played oh, through really? all of it. Oh, okay. It, to Robert. it is just the cutest game that <laughs> that like I have. Like and all the scenarios got you know. Right. Did you ever get the, uh, the, there's one, Downwood Tales, it's like 50 bucks? before I traded that one. Oh, okay. Heart of Bloom. Heart of so. Bloom, I have that one, then there was, and it's been out of stock forever. Actually, I think My Some Mystics is out of stock. Yeah. Um, but my girlfriend and I love it, and just, it's, it's such a nice change of pace from, like, all the serious games that we can play. You play a co-op game, a dungeon crawl co-op game, that's just whimsical, and it's like, oh, we're mice, and oh, is this our shield's a button, and, like, it's, it's adorable. So, um, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Like Mrs. Frisbee. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> no oh my gosh. What's like, wrong with this generation? You guys are 40. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Secret of Nim was yeah, the movie. Yeah, the it's Secret of Nim was the movie. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim was the book. Oh, okay. I've like heard, like that, yeah, I've, I've heard that one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I first thought you were trying to go Mrs. Frizzle, and I was like, the hell is Mrs. Frisbee? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> but anyway, back to my thing. Uh, John, I'm trying to steal my thunder. Um, Make me feel stupid because I don't know about your <laughs> your fucking seventies cartoon eighties <laughs> when you guys were thirty. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it's absolutely adorable. Best couples game. I like if anyone's like, oh, my girlfriend wants to kind of. It's like get get my some mystics because it's one hundred percent co op and cheese is how you power up. Yeah, cheese is how you power up. And then there's enough, like, the, each, each mouse has a personality, and so I'm like, oh, I hate this mouse because he's stupid and, and he's a thief. And then, but I love the guy that uses the Warhammer, and, um, yeah, the, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a old, you know, kind of story, like that, oh, King marries the Queen and she's evil. Shocking. But, uh, everything scales down to size and makes sense for if you're a mouse. Um, we still haven't finished it, though. Like, for how much I rave about it, we never actually have gone back. And so, I think last time, it's been so long since we played, we go back and we're like, what's going on? Um, so, actually, let me think, let me look at my uh, other list. Or the rest. Okay, so, I'm going to mention uh, Tail Feathers, because it's set in that same world, and it's like, I love that game. Really? Like, I thought it was great, because I liked, I liked X-Wing. Yeah. And it plays similar to that, except it's cute, and, the, and you actually have to, like, adjust your flight, which I thought was a really unique thing, other than just a stupid... You know, ruler. They're just like you. Know, you actually had to adjust your flight on the on the bird, um, and uh, it was just like feathers could fly off and disrupt attacks. You can actually, if your birds fly into each other, you go into a death. I really liked it. it kind of tanked, though. I think. I don't think oh yeah, yeah, no, it, it completely it. flopped, and I and I, I mean, I understand why, because that market it's like totally non-existent. Because um, my Semistic has has a unique market, but it was on my list. But more and more games kept knocking it off. Um, but yeah, that's my number eight, My Some Mystics slash Tail Feathers. My Some Mystics is the best couples game, though. My number eight? Your number eight? Raptor. <laughs> you and I love Raptor. 
I love Raptor too. You introduced that game to me. Yep. Traded you my copy and yes, had to buy another copy of it. Oh, did you? Yeah, I bought one like, right <laughs> after I traded it to you. Um, yeah, Raptor is awesome. It's uh, two player only. One person plays. It's definitely right? The um, Bruno Catala. Yeah. That's it. Um, it's not a filled game. It's not a point salad <laughs> game. It's not boring. <laughs> um, Bruno Catala. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the Matago <laughs> games, I think, isn't it? What? I think it's one of the Matago games. It is. It is. It's a second um, Matago game I like, actually. Uh, one person plays the scientists, and you are trying to tranquilize three of the five baby raptors or knock the adult raptor, the mom raptor, out completely. Uh, you have to hit her with five trank darts. Or, um, or you play as the uh, raptor side, which is the mother raptor trying to get three out of the five baby raptors to escape or to eat all the scientists. And it is just... It is so fun. So fun. <laughs> Like you really feel like you're outsmarting your opponent. Each side is so asymmetrical. It's a hand. blast. Yeah, but not not so asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Like you are playing, but like you, you you yeah yeah. I guess I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, they, they're pretty much different. Um, but I like the hand management part. It's I mean it's been, it's a tactic that's been used. You know, play a card that's you know higher or uh, or the higher your card. Uh, El Grande was the same thing. Was like kind of. Uh, was well this the higher is, card you played. You have a one through and a, a one through nine. Is it nine? Okay. Um, the lower the card values, the better the abilities on yeah. them. But your ability only triggers if it's the highest card. No, the lowest card played. Yeah, I think it was between lowest. the two. But the person that played the highest card gets action points equal to the difference between the numbers. So if one person played a nine, another person played a one. The person that played a nine would get eight action points, and the person's one would trigger the ability. Yep. It's it's a, it's so smart and yeah, it can really be frustrating is. because like not only do you have to worry about all your abilities, which that's the problem with the game is that you don't like I think it should be on the card, not just you know symbols because it's like you're looking at them trying to figure out what your opponent's gonna do and you're like I can't remember what any of these do. But it comes with nice cheat sheets that explain your powers and then it has oh, a it description board, of yeah. each of the opponent's powers too. That's not as in depth as yours, but. You are familiar. It gives you a basic overview of what your opponent can do and what all their card numbers do. It gives you an exact, detailed uh, reference of what your cards each one does. So, I forgot. I forgot. It's, you, yeah, we play like three or four times. Yeah, and, like I won a couple times, and you would not quit playing until you. No, I was like, it. I need to. He's like, Well, you want to try to sign this? No, I want to be the cute little fucking raptor. I hate this raptor. <laughs> yeah, and it was so sad. Like I was like, what? Do you, why are you taking my the babies? Like, what are you for doing? For science. Yeah, you just cut their heads off. Yep, for science. Oh, I see. That's what happens when you cut yeah, off their heads. Work. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's awesome. Um. So seven, me, right? Yep. My number seven is Raptor. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Not really much to say. The only thing I have to say about it is I made my top ten two player games. Before this was one of the games that I had to put on there. As soon as we played it, I was like, "Dang it!" And <laughs> I had to move stuff around. Um, yeah, I, I already talked about it uh, w when John mentioned it five seconds ago. Uh, so yeah, one higher than mine. I know, I know. I like it slightly better than you do. So <laughs> so now it's your turn to talk about number seven. My number seven is Ravens of Three Sahashri. I think Shah is how you pronounce it. It's a uh, two-player only card game. <laughs> that um, is extremely brutal. It's it's a uh, you know even though it's hard, like it's not frustrating hard. It's challenging hard. Yeah. It doesn't make you want to get up and walk away. It makes you want to reset and play it again. Yeah. It it really does. Yeah. Uh, you, you play. It's kind of an anime theme, kind of anime art. This girl named Ren is in a coma, and you play her friend Feth, I think. No, it's Seth. No, it's <laughs> Feth. Um, who is like psychically linking her in the in the coma, trying to help her uh, reawaken her memories and come out? These ravens are trying to steal the memories away while you're doing it. And there's this interesting atman, is what it's called. It's like a, the area where the memories are being built. That you have this really interesting mechanic where you're building it up. And then she has her heart cards where you're building these. Um, a, doditsu, I think, is what it is. Yeah, the poem. The poem. It's seven 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 five pattern. And so you're having to equal 7775 as you rebuild her memories and help her wake up. And it is very difficult, very fun. It takes a little bit to get the hang of because the rule book yeah, is true. a little funky. Watch a few gameplay videos. Yeah. Um, Z does a really good one to teach you how to play. Oh, does he? Okay. From Dice Tower. Okay. 
That's where I learned most of the rules. I figured that'd be right up his alley. That game would. And uh, yeah, he raves about the game. Oh, I bet it's, it's amazing. It's uh, yeah, we just got done playing it, and the part. <laughs> It's, it's not on my list, and you've never played it, so there's no way it's on your list. I'm really sad I didn't think of it because I, I had played it before I made or after I was making this list. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it would be on here, um, but you forgot to mention that the game gets like stupidly oh, yeah. hard. Each time you win, you, you open a little envelope in the back, and it makes the rules tougher and yeah. tougher and tougher. There's three envelopes. We just we just got to we just, just opened the second one by kind of cheating just a little <laughs> bit, which if we would have played better, we would have seen it and done it right. But then Brad showed up and threw us off our groove. Right, so. you know how that goes. So we'll, yeah. we're beating him up after this, but uh, yeah. So no, there's no way we're going. We'll to never open, open the third yeah. envelope. Not with <laughs> unless we just cheat. Unless we're just like, what? I, I swear it's a it's just like a hey, kill yourself. We already wrote, wrote, wrote your suicide note. <laughs> just leave it next to the game. <laughs> So, no, it's awesome. I, I really like I like the anime theme, too. I, I want more games to do that. Because I really like anime, so I really I need to play tra uh, Tragedy Looper. <coughs> that's also anime. That's theme. great. You so, haven't played it yet? No, and I bought the expansions. Because, I have, guys, I have a problem. I have a, I have a mental <laughs> illness. <laughs> <Not we all. laughs> yeah. I have all the Memoir 44 expansions. I haven't played it yet. I love it. I know. Anyway, it's so number seven. That was my seven, yeah. All right. My seven is Summoner Wars. This one, <laughs> this one, I put on. I, I don't play it as much anymore. It's one that I played so much from the time that it first came out because I play tested for it. Um, I had it all. I I was just I played it so I much, really like so it. much. I got burnt out on it. But, um, I mean, there's so many factions. There's so many. They have the second summoners that have come out now. The Masters. The Alliance set that yeah. came out that mixes some of the factions and stuff. So they have their own summoner that's part dark, you know, should be you know, Guild Dwarf and, and Shadow Elf mixed or something like that. Um, but uh, it's it's the ultimate two player as far as that. I, the reason it's not higher is just because I play testing it. <laughs> you and hate it now. Well, then the iOS app came out and I play tested for that too. So I played, I played thousands of games of Summer <laughs> Wars over the years. I that was my yeah. number one game I hate. That really? Was, yep, that was my Mighty Summer game. Wars? Yep. It was I I, I, I thought played, it was Kimmet. <laughs> no, that was on the list. Um and uh, actually funny enough I had to redo my uh, my top ten games I hate uh, list because uh, as I I played Marches and Mirage again that was number ten and I was like, you know I actually really like the game so I took it off, played Summoner Wars and I I I, I just hate it because it was you know, it's been so long since I played it at this point that I can't exactly remember why. All I know is that whenever I was playing, it, would, it everything hinged on a die roll for for the attack. for the attack, and that's how you win the game. Is right, through. Right. So it was. I th it could have just been entirely situational. I did play every faction. I I went through all of them, mm -hmm. and I I just bad rolls all night. So it just soured every. And I was just like. Was it just the master set that you played? Yeah, or the base, whatever the base yeah. set. It came they, with the. Uh, I don't like well, there was those packs that would come out that would add cards to all the factions. Mm, okay. There's so much good stuff in that that. That's how they. Does kind it of mitigate die rolls? Well, some of them do. Okay, see. So, and, and some of them were. That's. I think that's how they went. I think that's how Plaid Hat went with uh, fixing some of the okay. issues. Was they put these packs out that you because you then you deck build your decks yeah. and you could put your own. Right, on them and stuff like that, which building your I, own deck and stuff is. Kind I do remember there was a. a this was the last faction I played, and I was alright. I hated the game anyway, but looking back, it was. I don't remember what faction, but they they put up vines, yes. vinyls, and so like That's my girlfriend works. was playing whoever they had like a dragon or something, and it was like extremely OP. But by that time, my vine walls were so tough. She actually and I put my guy in the middle so she couldn't get to it. So that was a lot of fun because that was that was unique. But by that point, I already hated the yeah, game. Yeah, Because then I was like, I realized I trapped myself. I was like, crap! I have to destroy my own wall so I can get to you because I blocked you from getting to me. It's just it was just kind of one of those things. It's like a really cool, aggressive version of chess in a way. I mean, you're moving your cards around on the check on the yeah. the board, and someone can attack. You know, the range that game, that game could do with some some minis, some fluffing up. Yeah, I think, I think it's it just looks really cool. Like I said, it's, it would be higher, but I've just played it <laughs> You're so, so many burned times out that it's. Just, you know. All right, all right. Here's on number six. 
You. Thank me? you. Yeah, because I started with seven and it was Raptor. My number six is Rum and Bones. I oh, prefer second tie over the first edition, but the first edition was still good. Rum and Bones? I forgot about that. Rum and Bones oh, plays I best at two players, yeah. It only plays at two players, does it? Or is it like you, you can play with more, but you share the same ship? Right, you so share it's, sections, uh, it's a two, but yeah. it plays best at two. It's really a two-player game that can be played as teams, yeah, but yeah. it's a lot of fun. It captures like the, um, what do they call it? The MOBAs? It's like a MOBA pirate battle, if you can imagine. Yeah. One side, and you have the grunts, and they're just swarming forward, and you have mm. your heroes that just kind of run around and do their specialty stuff. That is a good way to put that. As and a it's, MOBA. it's very much a MOBA board game. Yeah, because before that, I didn't make this. So I, I actually felt like, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, ship battles. So I was like, why the hell are these guys always moving forward? There's the Kraken in the middle. The MOBAs. And then you're, and I think you actually brought that up, and I was like, oh yeah, they always just They run mindlessly forward. just charge straight forward yep. to the objectives. And then you have your main, main then guys. you have your main guys that just run around and do the specialty stuff around the edges. Yeah, yeah, it's not on my list, and the reason why is because, like, the the expansions and all the other factions were so expensive, like they were like forty bucks for one faction. That's, I've got the second uh, second, second tie, tie now with the expansions and all the extra Kickstarter bundle from it. Yeah. And then whenever we go to Gen Con, I'm going to pick up the uh, season one upgrade kit. Oh, like so convert it, it everything over everything. to the second edition. Yeah. And yeah. I'm gonna have just way more of it than I'm than I need at this and point. And you're gonna trade it off? No, <laughs> I will never trade that one off. Actually, that one will stay in my collection for years. <laughs> for years, and then in a couple of years, you'll trade it off. <laughs> it's gonna be like chaos in the old world. I still have all of that. Oh, it's do you time really? To trade it off, and it won't be. That's interesting. All right, number six. My six is a Cthulhu game. Oh, is it, it hasn't Arkham Horror? It hasn't been noticed. It hasn't been mentioned in any of the videos we've done yet. It is Elder Sign. Oh, well, that's because it's not a good game. <laughs> well, I mentioned good games. <laughs> it, is, it can be played with up to four people, but that makes it very, very yeah, I, you know, Yeah, you don't want to play with um, Two player. Makes it bogged down, too. Two player is the sweet spot. Plus, you can be played solo. Um, but uh, it's one of those dice chuckers, and you're just trying to move around. It's, it's, it's almost kind of like the dice chucking version, almost, of... Arkham LCG in a yeah, way. Yeah, it really you're, is. You're moving from spot to spot. Mm -hmm. You're rolling dice to try to solve stuff or take take out cards and stuff. They have um, the not the first expansion that came out, but the second, third, and fourth expansions that all came out actually added a story mode to it. That's it takes, what it needed, right? So, <laughs> so the core box in the first one take place. In, you know, you're in the you're in the, the uh, mansion, mansion, the museum, museum. Or and then but then like starting with the next one you actually go out of the museum and it's a story okay um and see that'd be stuff cool. so yeah and it's and it's, that it's two it's, games in a row that's all that was on my top 10 games i hate it's harder than you know, <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them games just maybe, you maybe. probably just took, took my top 10 and then made it your no, made it. No. i'm gonna claim that i love every one of these that he hates <laughs> I, it's, it's just, I don't know. You know what it is? You know what, honestly, I, I, I almost want to challenge people who mention games that they hate, myself included, on mindset when you go into a game. Mm -hmm. Like, I probably went into a more serious mindset, and whenever and whenever it's like, no, really, you're literally just rolling dice. Well, you can mitigate right. very, very little, at least in I, the base game. I only play the right. base game. I will tell you that this is the first Lovecraftian game that I owned and played, because um, I hated that theme. Really? When I bought this game, but I was like, okay, it works. It's good. It's a co op game. <laughs> it's got dice because I love dice. Yeah. Chuck and I was like, so I'm going to try it. And then I liked it. And and that's what it. I, this, so this was actually what got me into Cthulhu themed games. Okay. Well, too. I mean, so, I, mean I, I love that lore, so it's like yeah. whatever you got to do to get into it. Now, if they could just come out with a stupid box insert so I could put all that crap in one box. <laughs> oh, because it only fits the one I said. The one you said only has the first expansion. There's three other ones. One, like do you, I'm assuming you have all the stuff and you already took the insert out. Right. Well, it's one of those. It's one of those shorty. Yeah. Um, fantasy flight boxes. Right, anyway. Right. They, they need to come up with a so. big box. Fantasy flight. If you're watching this. You're losing Dude. money by Dude. not selling empty boxes to us gamers. <laughs> I would buy an no. empty box, no. kind of like uh, Smash Ups, big geeky box. Yeah. I would buy one of those from you for the entire Dunwich Legacy LCG. John. John. That has dividers. John. Not that big. They do. Wants the box. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe someone. Does. I want something yeah. official. I just, I'm about to do a partnership. I with, want something uh, official maybe from like, Fantasy yeah, Flight with the artwork that I can have each of your Mythos sets 
on my shelf in a nice clean box, be able to pull out so, the Mythos set with all the dividers, everything organized, sorted, you're, you're, exactly how I want. You're forgetting they do sell empty boxes because their inlays are essentially that. that it's literally true. empty box and then just a little but, divot. And but, then you just but an empty box with less in it. Well, and I, will tell you I would pay 20 bucks for that with the dividers and everything. I I'm really sure they haven't because that seems to be what they're That's doing. a great they passion. You, they short you on dice in their games and then sell an yeah. extra dice pack. <laughs> for the Arkham LCG, I bought the Broken Token Wooden Insert for the core box mm -hmm. and it fits everything in there. Well, I've got as of right now. Ultra Pro that I'm using now. But yeah, okay, that's fine. Right. I, I just, I, but I mean, you know, if they I, sold a box with the Dunwich Legacy artwork that kind of wrapped around with the whole campaign and did all that, that would be on my shelf right now. Yep. All right. This is a top ten two player. <laughs> top ten fantasy flight. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Pay attention, <laughs> fantasy flight. <laughs> so my number six is also a Cthulhu game. It's not Elder Sign. Uh, it's Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. Um, what? <laughs> that's the one. That's, see, that's, that's, I don't like that. Anything pandemic almost anymore, I'm so sick of. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're just like, I hate your game. I hate your game. Um, John's got my back, at least. He likes pandemic. I love pandemic. I watched him feeling. playing it one time okay. came in, and I was you just See, like, oh. I was very hesitant because I was like, oh, it's just, I, at that point, it was like, oh, it's just Cthulhu because it's popular. It's a, it's a the, pandemic reskin. That's going to yeah, suck. Yeah, it's going to suck. And it doesn't. It actually changes. It doesn't feel like pandemic. I mean, it does, obviously, because mechanisms are, are pandemic, but... It's thematic enough with the with the with the uh, 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 ancient ones up at the top to change how the games play. They need more of those. Uh, they need a lot. They need all of them. Like as many as Arkham Horror has, they need that many. I think an expansion would do good for it, that. It game, would actually. very much help it. Um, but it changes what you can do enough, and uh, and I think it's a I think it's a really good couples game. My girlfriend loves Pandemic a lot. She likes Cthulhu as well, so it's perfect for us to play. And at first, I was like, yeah, this is a great gateway game. It's so easy. Then Kat and I played like three games in a row, and we got our ass kicked. I don't know what happened. I, don't, we, I, was, I mean, it's very situational like Pandemic is. But, but we still had a great time. I have noticed that when Cthulhu Pandemic swings, like, starts swinging south, it's, it's so like, hard to dig out of. You're just like... I don't know what happened. Like regular pandemic, you could kind of be like, all right, guys, we need to buckle down, and this is what we need to do. And in Cthulhu pandemic, you're like, ah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, like, look, good thing I got a revolver with six months. Well, the only pandemic game I care for is the Cure. I like that the Cure. dice one. The dice one was really fun. I actually. enjoyed it. it makes, uh, custom it makes, dice. It makes it shorter. Oh, really? And, it, and it's just funner. You play game really short. Minutes, whatever. Short. Yeah, but this is like really This fast. is like five minutes. <laughs> and each, each person has their own unique dice. Okay. Each, each That's kind of cool. Yeah. So it's it just good. added expansions for that, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. There's a couple. Um, but anyway, so, uh, Rain of Cthulhu is different enough. I highly recommend getting it. Um, probably in... I like Iberia more. Um, I still... I like Iberia, but I still prefer the Cthulhu one better. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They're both really good. It's it's it is really it good. It is like way different than it's, normal pandemic, yeah. honestly. At this point, like if it's like who wants to play pandemic? Uh I don't want to play regular pandemic, I wanna play Iberia or Cthulhu right. is what it's come down to. because uh, now pandemic you need to play with the expansions. And it I played with all the expansions and base pandemic for me. Yeah. Those other expansions are really cool though. But it's like they they theme done a really good job of theming it because it's like if you wanna play modern day you play regular pandemic, if you wanna go to the I was not a fan of In the Lab. I could have done oh, that. Oh, yeah. that one was just a whole new mini game on on its own. I like it, but what the problem is is you pretty much need to do just In the Lab. Anything else that you'll, I've done I've done a run through for uh, Pandemic with all the expansions. It was hell. It was it was so hard. Um, but that's my number six. Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu. You should try it. Is it my six now? Uh, you've done six, right? I did my six. Okay. I think you're on five. So my five. All right, it is a, yeah, good couples, a good couples game. There we go. Um, with, a, with, with a weird couples theme. It's Veluspa. I have no idea what that Veluspa is. Veluspa is the title. <laughs> it's a tie, it's, it takes place in the Nor in the Viking uh, mythos uh, with like Thor and Odin. Oh, and, oh, that's and okay. Tile that's so and Loki and all that stuff. Um, but, I may uh, know what's on. I may know what game that's on your list. It is. Uh, I bought it. My wife and I played it. And she fell in love with it, so that's automatic. That's automatically a good thing. Remember, your right. significant other loves the game. Loves the game. She likes tile laying. Uh, it's a good idea. That mechanic. So, uh, 
it's it's a blast though. I mean, you can play with the expansions, whatever. It's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should you play it correctly, where you can only have a row of like five or something. Seven, seven. Yeah, we, we actually have like thirteen seven caps. So we're sitting there. Oh, so, so you're going like this, and you're putting one of those number ones and a number one. Yeah, over yeah. The the, the, the elves like or whatever. So we're like, <laughs> we're oh, like we got. I was 80. like, wait a minute, guys. There's a rule that keeps this from happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I like flipped through the rule book. I was like, "Oh yeah." We it was like, yeah, seven. it was so long. And, and then Kevin was sitting there, and yeah. he just yeah, he he like broke two hundred. <laughs> well, I'll like, tell you that I don't care anymore. I've played it with four, and I think it's too much with four, in my opinion. I see There's two big good number. Well, here's the deal. Like when when I've noticed when you play four, it ends up turning into just a big block. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you play with two players, you get like the more branches out, branches yeah. out and stuff, and your scores are more. We played with more. three last Friday, and that's not three horrible. wasn't bad. But I did prefer four. playing with two. Yeah, two is is. I can see that. Yeah, four was a little much, um, especially cheating. <laughs> especially cheating when people are getting thirty points just because they have that. Oh my god, it was, so it was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a blast. Though. It's a fun game. Though. It's, you know, I really like just, it. It surprised me because I didn't have that high of hopes for right. it when I bought it. Right. Well, because exactly. the theme's not really there at all. I well, didn't know I, what to expect. Well, from I it, so. I bought it because a podcast I listened to. They, every time they talk about the loose, but they yell it. Loose, you know, and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, you want to give me an example? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> all right, five, right? Yes. So my number five is a game that John and I still need to play because I feel like we'll tie. I don't even think you can tie in this game. It's Stronghold. Uh, still waiting on the Undead one. I don't think uh, it's ever well, coming out. The first or second, second edition. edition. Yeah. Second How edition. How the second edition expansions get reprinted yet? Uh, I haven't played second edition. Played second edition. Oh, I've seen. I've seen a run through for first edition. The only thing I wish they carried over was the, uh, um, battering ram, uh, to break down the gate. That was in the first edition that you could do. They took that out. Um, I kind of like that they took it out. Well, I. I mean, I, I like the theme because this game is so heavily thematic, and I, I flip back and forth on who I like more. Whereas I think it's very, it's a lot less stressful being the attacker, and I can actually say this because I didn't, play, I have never played this with my girlfriend because I'm the opposite. Huh? I think the attacker is more uh, less stressful. I that's think what I said. Defender. Oh, I yeah, you, said yeah, it's less. It's, I did. I, oh, I, I was okay. It's less stressful. Um, so I was actually playing a, a, against a challenging opponent, and it came down to the wire where I, I, I was reading the rules over and over, and I was like, I think I got it because all you need to do is break the wall and get one guy in. You don't have to end the round. As soon as that happens, the game ends. And so he thought you had to wait till the end of the rest so you can kill them. And I was like, I won. He's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I did it. Um, it's a little weird that you can't keep putting walls back up if, like, uh, like you can't stack walls. I think you could do that in first edition. You, you can strengthen your walls. There's no you? limit to number of walls. Really? Rules. It's in the rules. Huh. Well, I still won as a, as a defender <laughs> without having to do that. Um, but it is such a good, like, probably the best, like, uh, like siege, siege game. Um, it captures the feel of that battle of uh, Battle of Helm's Deep. Helm's Deep. That's yep. It. Were you gonna say Battle of Waterloo? Waterdeep is what I was gonna say. No. <laughs> battle of Waterdeep. You know the great one. D and D. Yeah, the great it, Battle of Helm's Deep. Yep. It adds like two. It even has Kamikaze Works. I it mean, does. They do. Oh, and yeah. it's 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 really a read your opponent. Like it's like okay, yes. I'm gonna block you over here. Okay, good. Your trolls can't go that way. Oh my God, they're all going that way. Run. And the person that's what like 40 people. It's, it's one of those things that as their people kept, keep dying. The defenders have a limited pool of, the of guys where the attackers bag. have a giant bag of uh, over 100 cubes that they can just keep churning out at you. They get screwed, though. Like, it can go one way. You can get all trolls and you can get all goblins. Well, that just, just once die. you pull all goblins out, you know that there's less goblins in the bag for the next few draws. That's yeah, true. Yeah. And it balances out. And then, yeah, and then, like, the trebuchets and catapults, like, have a higher chance of missing, but as you keep missing, they're like, oh, they finally, say finally we cranked it out, now we're going to hit. And you're they like, say you're dialing it in. Yeah. You actually discard the miscard out of the deck and reshuffle the deck. And, and then they can have magic. And you and the, the attacker can have a variety of what they want to do. They can actually start Change their spells. strategies and readjust their cards. And, and the more, here's here's the brilliant part. is the Have you played it? I first edition one time. Okay. So I, I think first edition was the same, but the more the attacker does, the more the defender gets to do. Which is a... Every it's cube great you spend as the attacker gives the, gives defender, the defender more defender time. time counters. And so you, you want to do a lot, but then you're like... Oh my god, they're going to be able to do so. You want to be as efficient as I possible. Think, honestly, I think the more time you get the defender is worse off for the attacker. Yes. Like, by far. You know, like, even though you get to do a whole bunch, 
the defender can also do way more. I like hate to, doing those double pushes on the final assault yep. because it gives the defender so much time. Yeah. But sometimes you need that extra <clears throat> then push. Then you can to get your sabotage it, so it makes them cost more. To it, it's a brilliant game, and yes. I've and I've. I, I, it's very stressful, and I think that's one reason why I haven't played it with you. I haven't pushed for it because I'm like, you and I are going to be. <laughs> Just, it's going to be been game. eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my number five uh, uh, stronghold. At least it would be a good one because you can't tie in it. That's true. We find, we find a way. We find a way. Would win. <laughs> you run out of cubes in the back. <laughs> what? That's not even possible. Am I at five? Is yep, yep, here five. I just did. He started this five. Okay. My five was stronghold. Robinson Crusoe. As a two-player game? As a two-player game. I've never played it. Is oh, my it's favorite. Great. It's great. I Actually, now like that I think about it, I've only played it. Oh, I've played it. I love it at two players. I'll wow. play it solo, but whenever I play it solo, I play it two play with two characters. Wow. It plays uh, perfect for me at two players. I love it. That's interesting. Uh, you are castaways on the desert island trying, there's like eight different scenarios you're trying to do. They just printed a second printing of it, second edition with out of stock fancier everywhere. stuff, it's fancier components. Better either version, <laughs> either version, yeah, better rule book, but either version plays great. Yeah, I think I think it's <coughs> the same. Uh, in fact, yeah. they just have like different wooden yeah, tools, yeah, and like different a, artwork on the tokens. So, yeah. Love that game. Yeah. That's one of my favorite co-ops that I own. It's a great couples game because you literally have to sit there and just work together. Not if your girlfriend hates Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> True. But I just mean it's a good game because you really have to work together and communicate with your inten intentions and what needs to be done. And there's there can be a bit of an alpha gamer in it, but it's really more trying to figure the puzzle out in a way. It really is. Um, and I mean, I tend to be more of an alpha gamer, um, but I have played with people where I was like, I think this is the best. And they're like, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, all right. And Roll so the dice and get bit by a snake. I'm like, good. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you have gangrene. You piece of. I'm glad you got bit on the neck and you're dying. I think. I think what I'm more excited about is the Martian. I know. Martian. I'm picking that up at Gen Con. Yeah, because the Robinson Crusoe theme doesn't really work for me, but I think the Martian. I still love. I like Robinson Crusoe, but I see why a lot of people um, wouldn't. That the deserve. Martian one is gonna instead of having the card decks, it's gonna be after driven. It is yeah. after yeah. Yeah. That's gonna fix. Gen that's gonna Con. save so much. Now we're just gonna have to run for that one because pandemic. That's where I'm going to be there. first. Is yeah. that one? Stupid pandemic like this too. Um, yeah, my favorite mechanic in that entire game though is the fact that you, you, the the exploration, the cards come back. You're like the cards Hell come yeah. back to haunt you, yeah. and they're Free worse food? when they okay. come back. Because uh, I, what I do, I, I don't think this is a rule, but I don't read the bottom half. Like I I, I cover it up and I look at the top. And I'm like, this is what we can get. Do we want? To? And I play with someone. They're like, well, what's the consequence? I'm like, you don't get to know that. Like, right. I don't, it's like that's not. Like, if you know the consequence, then it's not as thematic. The other so, thing I do that's not in the rules is I draw off the bottom of the deck so I don't know what's coming up next off the event. That deck. is a brilliant idea. I draw off the bottom <laughs> instead of the top. That is so smart because I that was another thing. I wish the backs were all the same so that, right. that yeah, that's, that's... I just draw wow. off the bottom card instead of the top card. That's that's really smart. What do you think of the expansion? Um, it's awesome. Vo Voyage of the Beagle with it's uh, completely Charles different. Darwin. Yeah, you are... It's cool. Yeah, you are... Card. Helping Darwin go through and write his book. And it is brutal. It the is. campaign part of it is really well thought out. It really is. Yep. It changes the game just enough, but it keeps the core rules there, so that like all you got to do is teach somebody the core game once, and you can break yeah. the expansion out immediately for the so, second game. Hey, now all we need to do is get uh, is kill animals and get samples. Yeah. Or capture them. And I really captured. like it's a complete change of pace too. Right. Right. I yeah. I really I really like. And it. I will say each of the eight scenarios in the box in the base game, complete different field. Have you done all eight? I have lost all eight. Oh. <laughs> I have one against the like one, three. I played three out of the one, eight. One, two. I, have, I cannot beat the cannibals. There's six. It's the cannibal one that I, I can't think get. There's through. eight. I think there's, there's, there's six. Is there a zombie one? There's a cannibal so one. So there's a there's a cannibal one. Uh, yeah. Then BGG, a lot of people fa a fan made ones. King Kong is one. I think they actually oh, okay. added to the because gotcha. some of them were really good. That the company that might be the eight. Yeah. I'm, the eight I'm thinking. Of. I think that was the new version yeah. comes with the two. Uh, One's off board game game, right, and then right. the other one on the yep. other side of it. And I printed those off, and they're free to print off, which is great. I've done uh, the, the first one, I did the volcano one, and I did the stupid Jenny. Say Jenny. You bitch. You, why are you on the rock? Like, well, you can die. <laughs> I don't care about you. Nope, no, you have to save her. Like, I don't know why. I did, yeah, I didn't like saving Jenny either. I, 
I've made it through. That was my run through, and we're sitting there. I don't remember Jenny. if the cannibal was the second or third, but I made it through the first, the whichever, the other two, and then the fourth. But I cannot beat the I, other ones I've after lost that. All of them. That's funny. I have lost at all of them. That's really funny. All right, what are we on? Four? I'm starting four. Yeah, My four is the best Lord of the Rings game out there, and that's War of the Ring. Have you guys played it at all? I played. I played Battle of Five Armies. Ever okay, I, I don't like Battle of Five Armies. Armies. I think it's too unbalanced. War of the Ring, I think, is absolutely balanced. Um, and. I, it's it's like what it's my favorite part of that is the fact that it's what if Lord of the Rings because like, you, you it's yes everything from the the movies and, and the lore of Lord of the Rings which are my favorite movies of all time but it's like you can change it enough to be like what if uh, you know Gandalf didn't help the Fellowship and he went out to go help all this and the expansions just bring more life into the newest one added the the Ghost Army um, for so for the people so they got the Eagles the Ghost Army and the Ents. And the shadow people got uh, the Shelob, the spiders, the um, skanky people that Saruman hired, and then they got the ship. The Easterlings? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think the Easterlings, they're called. whatever they're called. Yeah, they got them, and then the the people who run the ship. So it allows them to actually get their people and go by uh, sea. And I'm just like, it, it's so cool. And then I just got the other one, Lords of Middle Earth that add characters, so Elrond and, and the Balrog and Treebeard and all of them actually are playable characters instead of just being an event card. Um, that's cool. That's hand, man hand management that I love as well because it's too dual where it's like, oh, I can either use this to help me right now or it's like a combat uh, thing. You should point it up for the collector's edition. I would. Isn't it like $400? <laughs> it's more than that. It, it, yeah, it's it's more. The At this point. Book. I know they were. I know they when they made it. Everything. Yeah, yeah. I would love that if uh, it wasn't so outrageously expensive, um, and if I didn't, if I got to play this game more, that that is a problem. It, it's it's a long game. Was, that's my biggest complaint. Is I think the minis need to be painted. Oh yeah, yeah, by far. Like, and at paint? least <laughs> at least they just need to be primed different colors for the different factions. Yeah, so they're they easier do. to tell apart. Yeah, they're pretty bad minis, but I mean, they're you don't really do a. I mean. You do everything with the minis. Right, but um, you do need to differentiate the factions, and they're all being cast out of the same color plastic. I think yeah. they should have done elves out of like a lighter green, you know, right, the, right. the free folk out of a lighter blue, right. and like the dwarves out of a darker blue, and kept like kind of a blue green tone for the good guys, and like an orange yellow red tone for the bad guys out of different shades. Right. I think would have helped a lot. And in this game, I love playing the free peoples because. One, like, you don't try to win through combat, you can with the Free Peoples, but you're also secretly moving the Fellowship to Mount Doom. Once that happens, it, it's thematic in, in that sense of them uh, climbing through Mount Doom. I mean, they can be corrupted easier while they're there. Um, and then, the, but the Shadow People, it's, it's the same thing as Stronghold. Shadow People have, you know, unlimited resources. Free People have, you know, when, they're, when their people die, they die. It's so good. It's so good. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I just need to play it with someone other than my girlfriend. She doesn't really like strategy games, so I, it's like we'll have to play some time. Okay. Yeah. My turn for four. Yeah. Star Wars Rebellion, which is the what if of the Star Wars yeah, games. That is true. Yeah, it really is. Like the Star Wars <laughs> version. Of um, one person plays the um, Empire, who is hunting down the Rebellion base and trying to destroy them, and the Rebellions are ha hiding their secret base doing guerrilla warfare against the Alliance, or the Imperials, and you have no chance to meet them head to head. Like, they, no. will, they will crush you in a fair fight. Yeah. The, the Empire? Yes. Must, okay. The yeah. Empire will crush the Rebellion in a fair Absolutely. fight. Absolutely. So as a Rebellion, you have to be really sneaky. And the Empire is just spreading like cockroaches across the galaxy. Yeah. And you, you really get into it, and you, it's really thematic. And I really loved every part of it except the combats. So clunky. It's I absolutely <laughs> love the combats, and um, what is it? The Warhammer 40k space that you didn't like as much? Oh, uh, Forbidden Stars. Forbidden Stars. I wish, since it's a two player game only, that the combat was more like Forbidden Stars, where you could build I like, did like well, the combat, from like yeah. where you could build strategies yeah, and tactics that would affect your dice rolls, and then combat would be more intimate and would feel mm -hmm. like a bigger impact in the Slight game. Slight deck building, from the slight deck upgrades. building, where you're yeah. right. 
And like a lot of like what you kind of send into battle, you could lose, but you also like the more you send in, the better it helps your odds. Mm -hmm. I think would have made a bigger difference in the game. I love the rest of it. Don't get me wrong, but I wish that the combat would have felt more intimate than just I draw three cards off this deck and two cards off this deck, and then throw a handful of dice. I get three hits. Yeah, that was. was I really wish it would have been more like Forbidden Stars, where I mean, it felt way more tactical. It's one of those things where it's like the same thing as like Twilight Imperium. Everything else about that game is great except the combat. It's True. basically, oh, I roll eight dice. All right, I killed seven of your. It's and it's so it's just like I think it's just a way to speed up combat. Um, right. My biggest complaint with uh, Rebellion. But was, with Rebellion though, is the combat doesn't need necessarily need to be sped up since it's a two player game. Since you both would be invested and uh, both would yeah, be involved, that's true. That's you wouldn't have any downtime for other players. And I, I feel like they didn't need to speed the combat up. Combat needed to be more in depth. Right, right. As, especially. Like, cause it, cause it goes, it like takes turns, right? It's like one round of space combat, then one round of ground, and yeah, it, it, they could have really done. It's all space combat. If one survives, then you can descend your troops and then right. There could have been though. like it, cards, it, like take, you know, like remove so many ships of this type from this combat in space. You can have them do something on the ground instead, or you know, like have these troops mm -hmm. with like an assault battery from the ground or something do this. You can shoot down to the planet. Right yeah. from the planet, could shoot up into space and try to help and yeah. do different things like that. They it could have kind of really did that a little bit. They had the, you know, the they the, had the little upgrade things, but right? But it only helped in. It could have been a lot of roll. surprise attacks from the rebellion, with some of the cards being able to do stuff, and it could have been a lot of tactical type training type or like mechanical superiority mm -hmm. for the empire. They could have really captured the theme better if they would have done combat a lot different. And they could have captured the characters a lot better if they would have done the combat like that better. So that's a good segue. It's not on my list. Uh, I thought about it, but. My biggest complaint wasn't even the combat. The combat was, I mean, it wasn't amazing. That's, it, was, it was just there. Um, it was the fact that the more you played the game, the, the, the worse it got for me. Because a lot Which of it, one? Star Wars Rebellion, was because it's like now none of it's like a surprise factor. I know what you can do. If you're putting a character on that, I know what that's going to be. So it's like I can plan for that. That, um, but in a way, that like that amount of it brings knowledge of it brings a new it, layer it of does, strategy. But it does it doesn't bring a new layer of theme. I think I think Agreed. in a heavy Star Wars theme game, where like a what if scenario, is like like if I'm putting Darth Vader on something, you know, I'm probably trying to steal and and carbonite your person. Right. But again, or if or, they would have had better combat and where stuff like even combat cards where like this is the effect of the card, and then like if Vader's present in the system. You yeah, you got a little instead, bit. You got a little bit more. Where you manipulate your dice and you do more. So you, you could be moving Vader think, yeah, in the system have, yeah. to go just beat through a bunch of guys instead of just going. To well, that's true. Well, well, yeah, but you place them there on the board. If you're placing them on a, on an objective, you most likely know what it's because you can't place them off the objective to go move your people once they've been set. Right. So so that's yeah. I mean, you're right that they do help in battles, specific battles for their. But I just mean if you, it would have added extra depth right. into it with you being able to like send Vader to do this, right. and also while he's there, maybe he's just doing that just to accomplish the mission. Yeah, and it, it's, it's another thing because like with Obi Wan, for example, you can get as a as a rebel, you can get like the the points um, if if Obi Wan gets captured. So yeah, so that was my problem was the fact that like you would like. You're gonna use Luke to go. So eventually, I guess it's not like it's not a surprise factor. It just starts becoming the same. Right. I guess maybe that's if it becomes too predictable. Yeah. And so that was my. And so and but it's getting an expansion. What do you think? I've owned it three times, sold it three times, <laughs> haven't played it. You're kidding? Really? Yeah. Why? Because I got better deals. Don't you love Star Wars? Wars? Yeah. Don't you like orgasm for Star Wars? I just never could find it. But there's play dice with, to throw. Um, I know I could never find anybody to play with. My my wife and kids and they don't. Fair enough. And I guess if you were to play with us, we but we have it. Right. So that's, I just fine. I just sold it for profit every single time. So. <laughs> that's cool. You know. It is getting the uh, uh, Rogue One expansion, which I'm super excited yeah. for because that's what that game needed. Was it's like after playing it, I played it a lot, and I was like. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I still have it, but because uh, I do, but it's not at that point. I really love it, and I do see what you're saying with the like once you get more knowledgeable of it. But I still think that the more knowledge you have of what your opponent can do, gives you more strategy on what you can do and what you need to do. And and you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Um, so. But anyway, number four. four. Who's starting four? You. I think you're starting four. I just did my four. You're. We're years three. 
My number three now? I think you're starting three. Oh, I haven't said my four yet. Oh, yeah. shit. He hasn't said his four yet. So. I don't care. It's <laughs> going to be a game I hate anyway. So. <laughs> and you probably haven't played it. Um, my number four is a Fantasy Flight LCG. And it's the Game of Thrones second edition. I LCG. have played that. You have? No, I've, no, well, I, no, I haven't. Game of Thrones LCG. <clears throat> have you played second edition? I. The new. Uh, I played a bunch have... of the first edition. I think I played one game okay. of the second edition. They, they re. So they put out a whole new course set, reset the entire Completely game. different rules now. Yeah, yeah, it's more smooth. It's a lot funner than the first. It's not as clunky, and there's not an overpowered crap like the first well, edition. I love that it's, overpowered crap in the first. Well, but so it fun. gets, as you know from <laughs> I'm our, sure you do. As you know from our LCG playing, uh, overpowered cards just suck. Yeah, they're playing against other people, especially two-player games. This oh. is, if you like Game of Thrones, this does look great. Bugs. Great for your uh, theming. Um, when you build a deck, what's different from first edition is you pick your your main, main house. House, house, but then you can have a alliance house or I can't remember Ooh, what they call that's it. That's cool. So like you could be the Starks, and you could have a flag bearing uh, allies with the Lannisters, and you can you can put some Lannister cards in your deck. That's interesting. Or you can I mean any I mean you got you have all all the like houses that. do that. What can, like eight? It eight has it has eight? the uh, not counting the minor houses. Right. It has the uh, Watchers of the Wall. You know, it has cool. as a faction, it, it has everything, and you, can, you, you need, that's a neat way you can go. But if you go, they call fealty if you just do one faction all the way through with mm -hmm. that deck, and then you get a bonus, like the first person you play out is cheaper if you don't put any okay. other factions into it. Okay. Um, I, I play great. Can right? you, like, combine, like, every house? Like, you just well, have a only one. Okay. You can only bring I have one. alliances with everyone. Right. There's, there's neutral cards, but then you can, okay. you can have a flag with, with one other feel. I usually run... Greyjoy fealty, um, but uh, it's it's fun. And not many people around here play it. The only time I ever no, get to play it is yeah, when I go to Tulsa at a Team Covenant store. And, it was and one of those things that I, because I, I, I really like the books. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't care much for the show, but I'm one of those guys. The books better. Um, I'm pretentious. Uh, and Wait I, <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> and I was looking. I was going to get it. Get it, but. They had so many expansions, and I was like, I don't want to go down that hole because it's gonna be deck building, and I already hate right. it anyway. So, well, and that's why I jumped in because so maybe the, if you have it, right? Which well, you do, yeah. So then I'll just play. When, play with when you. the core set came out, I was like, because I had bought a collection of first edition from a guy, and I had, I mean, it was a huge box of cards, and I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able. I messed a couple of games, mm -hmm. but then I was like, okay, they announced the new core set, so I was like, this is where I'm getting it. So I bought in. three core sets, and I kept buying everything. I'm not up to date on the packs right now, mm -hmm. but um. It's just a blast. I pimped it out. I have metal gold coins to pour it. Of course, of course Team Covenant do. store in Tulsa, they um, sell little wooden. They're made out of oak. They're mm -hmm. little wooden engraved of the house for oh, the house sigils. House yeah, so I, bought cool. the, so I have the Starks, the Starks, Lannisters, and Greyjoys. That's so cool. I can kind of put, you know, that's it's really neat. It's it's a great game. Who's your favorite house? Uh, Greyjoy on that game. No, I, like in the story? Yeah, yeah. In the actual. I'm, I'm always a Stark guy. Okay. Uh, but but as far as in the game, it's great joy. Yeah, no spoil. I think we can go down that round. <coughs> if we want. Who's your favorite house? I'm I'm a dragon fan. Of Targaryens. Like the Targaryens. Yeah, I'm I'm Lannisters. Uh, just He's one of those spirits. guys. <laughs> well, funny enough, my favorite character, Starks, really. Your sister. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I will say my favorite character is Tyrion. So I mean, yeah, Tyrion's awesome. Tyrion's awesome. Uh, funny enough, my favorite character isn't a land. Like I like the house I like because Varys the Starks too. are a joke house. I love Varys. the Targaryens. I hate Daenerys. I hate her. Have you read the books or you just watched the show? I haven't read the book. Oh, I've, I've read the first. Book. So I'm up to okay. on the show. I haven't read. Okay. The haven't I read her past the first book. I just I want her dead. I want her to die. I want her to watch her dragons die and then die. <laughs> but uh, no, my favorite is actually uh, Littlefinger. He is my favorite character. I like Varys because I like Varys too. He is it's just, just like those so two, subtle, right? You just he has got he plays so innocent, but you know I there know. is just some grand scheme behind the scenes because you know he can't be everything he seems to be. I know, and it's like anyway. I love it. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so number four. Three, I think. Is it my turn for three or is it your turn for three? I you started four. I started four. So you're starting three. Yeah. Mark and Moore LCG. Is my number three. somewhere. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it would have had to be. It's your favorite game of all time. I figured it would be your favorite two-player game. Yeah, too. it's amazing. It's amazing. That's interesting. Um, it's not my favorite two-player game of all time just because I play it solo so much. Yeah. So oh, that's, okay. That's why enough. it didn't make my yeah. top of my two-player game Okay. List. 
is because I solo it so much, it doesn't have to be two player. Okay. My list changes change drastically. Right. Go solo. Yeah. And um, just the fact that I play it solo so much kind of bumped it down a little bit on the list because that there's other two player games I would rather play than because I can just always break out Arkham by myself. I mean, that's no big deal. Robert, come here. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to take. Is uh, you weren't here earlier? Is Firefly better as a two, as a two player game? Is it best at two players? I don't even know if they can see your head's probably cut off, but it's fine. I think it's it. It's okay. I, 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 I would say it's better the more people you have around the table. Okay. Really? I think I've two is perfect that's for it because expert. any more than two, you have fifteen minutes between turns. I, I can understand that, but it's still. Tabletop. I think the more, the longer he's in the Firefly world, is best, like the better. So <laughs> True. Like, I, what, 50 yeah, that's fine. <laughs> with, with, with all the expansions, though, the verse is, that so, is so, so large that if you could populate with more players, I think it's more fun. I just, yeah, I do see that, but I don't know. It I just. Played it. it almost seems like there should be like a simultaneous turn thing then once you get over four players. There's a lot of games <laughs> you can I mean, probably do a lot of these turns. Especially with the, the way the shopping mechanism works in that. Yeah. It can get very AP, very dragged down. That's that's why I said it works best at two, is in my opinion. That's it's my okay. it was my what was it? It's like your nine, nine two player game. Because I would rather sit here, take my turn, watch you do what you're doing, take your turn, take my turn, mm -hmm. take your turn. And watch keep the game slowing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that, that's literally you can finish the entire season while you wait in a five player game. <laughs> oh, is it my Oh, I, I don't want to play anymore, guys. <laughs> All right, you can go. You can I, go. Just, I just want your opinion. <laughs> anyway, do you have any more to say on uh, Arkham? On Arkham? Not that we haven't anything. said before. Right. All right. Three. All right, my number three is not my top couple of game, and it plays up to is four. It's not your top? It's not my okay. top. It's close. Okay. But um, it plays best for two, in my opinion, and that is unfair. Really? Um, oh, that's so not a couple. You think that's a couple's game? Yeah. Man, depends on the couple. <laughs> 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 How long are you? Are, are, are you guys, years, are you guys so, okay? Yeah. Are you guys <laughs> like, like <laughs> Well, here's the reason. Okay, and, the, and, the reason, <laughs> and the reason I like it as two is because I've, I've played it all, mm -hmm. all the deals. And when you play with four, there's teaming up. And it, just, mm. and it just ruins people. You know what? I think, you know, like, see, I, I like got Fletcher. Like, if we were playing against Fletcher, we would all just kick Fletcher's ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know? It is unfair, though. He's the weakest well, theme I, part. Exactly, but that's what I'm saying. When you play two players, you have to go after them. So that takes true. that choice out, and they know it's coming. And you we know. did, and I played it with you, and then I played it with my, my girlfriend. Didn't like it. She we didn't, didn't like finish it. the game. We, we yeah, I would have won. We we all thought like I don't think I would have. It was close. Um, but what, here's the thing I really like because it is called unfair, and it can be cutthroat, but it doesn't have to. Right. You can easily play all the event cards to benefit yourself, and that could be a very passive game. And it's just hey, who built the better theme park? And I love that because in a game like that, you expect it to be shut down your right, shut down your right, and it's like I'm not having fun. And well, I well, am. And I'll, and I'll tell you if and. Like I said, I've been married for 15 years, so the, the fuse is a little shorter. <laughs> but when you're like, if you're, playing a, if you're playing a girlfriend or something, right? There's that there's that tension of waiting. Okay, who's going to play that first mean card? Right. And then once they play that first mean card, it's it's on. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, that's how that's how you and I were. We were sitting there, and then like I was like, oh, it's very passive, and I'm like, I'm gonna shut down that ride, and you're like. That's how it is, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, but I was like, I'm like, I felt like I, I was like, what did I do? <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing. But no, I think, I mean, it works. It's because, same, like, I almost put Smash up on my list, but I didn't for the same reason because. That's a two player game? Yes. Really? The only reason is because of the whole teaming up thing. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff on those games where you can pile on one person and it just. That is true. I really want to do an unfair uh, run through for it, but now that I've moved away, uh, but the only person I can probably get is a third person. And I really don't want to do that game at three because someone's going to get ganged up on. Yeah. And it's, it's at, least at, at least in four, so it could probably be 2v2. Four is hard, man. <laughs> And, but I, I agree. Yeah. Actually, that's that's a good point. Especially I play with some dickheads. <laughs> I've never played it. So. You haven't played it yet. I think you'll like it. Yeah, it it is yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, Vassal trashed it, uh, and I see why he would because it's like it's basically roller coaster tycoon, and you're like, oh yeah, and you go with that mindset. Of, oh, I just get to build whatever I want, and then someone comes in through a luck of a of a draw and be like. Oh, all your yeah, you're right. Your whole park shut down. Well, most you're, of the time, you're not getting the any money. Is shut down, so you don't get. It's not like the right. Just yeah, it doesn't go away. It, it comes away. back. It's just one but turn, you don't get the money for that. Money right. is very well, tight in that game, so shutting it down is like, 
<laughs> and I mean, you know, the people that have a problem with that game, I mean, just need to reread the title. That's and true. Before you play it's the called game, Unfair. Game, it's, and yeah. what I've started doing, like, whenever I did my run through for Talisman, I, I was like, everyone, this is random. So no one would get, right. and everyone had a great time because they went in the mindset knowing that, oh, it's random. Yeah. That's, that's a good choice. And, and they're coming out with um, a, bunch of, a bunch of expansions, and it's going to be like Smash Up style. They're going to come out with themes, like theme decks. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to duck the next. The first Aliens expansion is going to have either two or four yeah, decks. Dinosaur. There was, yeah, there was Aliens, Aliens, Dinosaurs, and there's... Gen Con. If Gen Con's did, one. If you, did, um, the oh, Kickstarter, cards. if you did the Kickstarter, you got a Kickstarter pack that had mm -hmm. a promo, like one card from several factions yeah. that would be coming out, just to kind of give you a preview yeah. of what's coming. That's cool. Yeah. And um, one, of, one of the cards was Gen Con, and I was yeah. like, oh, that's going to be really So cool. it'll, it'll be pretty... It's going to get better and better. Sweet, I think. All right. My number three was actually my number one at first, and uh, it just kept getting, like... Push, push back, and that's Santorini. Uh, this is the number one. Uh, I said my Mystics. Um, it's a really good couples game. I love Santorini. Um, it is so. It's it's just so you know whimsical. I and did you? Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> I was like, did you? we just talked about that. Uh, no, I don't think I will ever get rid of this. And the expansion was. It's just a little box, and it adds three three modules um, that that change the game. It is just so fun. It's a it's an abstract game. You know, you just you place your people and you build up these little tiles, and at the end you just have Santorini, yeah. and it's it's just adorable. The the gods all have unique powers, and they were smart with it because there's a lot of gods that in the expansion they're like, don't play this god with this god. They tell you who not. Some to. of them are overpowered. Uh, one of them, <laughs> my uh, my girlfriend hated me because I had uh, uh, Atlas, and all he can do. Because the, the way you win, I don't know if you've played Santorini, have you played Santorini? The way you win is you, you build a three-story uh, tower and you get your person to the top. So you can jump down as many. So it's move, place. Yeah, move, you have to move and you have to place. You have to build. Part of a tower. And so you can move up one row and that's your max, and, but you can move down as many. So I can't jump up from the floor to it, the third to win. So you have to build smart, and you, but you don't because then your people can build and block you. And so you're doing all this. But with how you can stop people, because you can build also is high. So if someone has a three and they're on the level two, they can go up. All you need to do is move next to it and put a little blue roof on it, which blocks them from getting there. So you just stalemate each other the entire game. What Atlas can do is he can build that blue roof on any level. So if someone builds a one, you move over, put a blue roof on it. She hated me. Keep in mind you have two. You have two workers, yeah. Too, so right. Just because one, you you could be kind of like misguiding somebody, like coming over here and start doing a bunch of building while you're slowly doing something with this guy. Yeah. And that's what I do. My wife and I played four or five games of it, mm -hmm. and she just didn't really care didn't for really it. Like so it. that's why I ended up selling it, because I kept blooming her over right, here right. and I just built something. My girlfriend had a blast. She hated Atlas. I think it was Atlas. Yeah, he's the one that holds that's Atlas. What, I, yeah. She yeah. hated him. I loved him. Um, but the Golden Fleece expansion was is brilliant. Changed it just, it wasn't it wasn't needed, but it changed it just enough. That, mm -hmm. that just tweaked it in, in a brilliant way. Um, and and she loved it, and we and I it's it's I love it. Number three, Santorini. You're gonna start with your three, right? Yep. So it's my two. Two. It's my number one couples game. There you go. It is Seven Wonders Duel with Pantheon expansion. I Seven Wonders Duel was on my top ten, but I've heard Pantheon fixes it. So Pantheon is is awesome. Have you played? You played with Pantheon? Mm -hmm. It, I like Pantheon. You know, you, you have you come. It pops out with the shapes of the cards that you draft from to start with. Mm -hmm. But then this puts a big board over the top of it, with, and there's god cards, and then you okay. you just they put tokens like on the powers. Cards. Do they have the, right? Do right. They well, right. And how you get the different things and, and everything is uh, they still have the shapes out there, but there's little tokens ran, uh, put in different spots okay. on those cards. So like once you get that card, then you get that token, and that token lets you do special stuff with those gods. Is is that so how it fixes it? Because yeah. now people aren't going to burn cards just right. for money, because then they're getting you closer to that token. Right. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, so you're getting, you're getting these things, tokens and, are worth getting too. And those god cards, like practically every one of them, is just kick ass, you know. Mm -hmm. So like when you get a god card, you place it out here. Um, like it's kind of like if it's set between you and I, if I put it way over here, mm -hmm. it's really cheap for you and expensive for me. Okay. If I put it way over here, it's really cheap for me and expensive for you. And in the middle, it's kind of because anybody can buy that god. Okay. But you get to place it where you think mm -hmm. and in at their face down. Okay. At the front, at one point. And, right. You know, and then they get flipped up. Um, but uh, 
it's just it's just awesome. It just right. makes it, and if and the reason it goes up so high is because my wife's number one game, probably ever for until now until. <laughs> Forever, <laughs> these ceases to exist. It's Seven Wonders. Okay, she loves that game. Wasn't that your guys' like startup game? Was Seven that Wonders? That was one of the ones. Okay. That she, the one I kind of got her into gaming. Gotcha. She loves the hell out of that game. So then when Duels came out, it, it was just an obvious right, right uh, purchase. You know? Now you said now would it be on your list without the Pantheon expansion? Yes. Would it still, it's still would it be number two? Um, or would it just would it drop? A, does the Pantheon expansion like change it? Would it be like it 10 changed it dramatically. Two. Okay. Yeah, it probably would have been about four or five. Or okay. Two. I mean, it wouldn't have done a crazy change, but it does get a little stale after you've played it okay. quite a bit. And then, like you said, I mean, there's people the, are the just burning. Stuff burning. I'm like, oh, I wish I could cool play. <laughs> um, but we never really burn a whole lot. I mean, we just kind of go for it and just play it. Right, and, right. As, as most people do. Right. Uh, but no, the, 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 the Pantheon expansion just makes it, you know, obvious like choice way to, go, to go high. All right. My number two is a game that I've been playing a lot lately and just bought everything for, and that's Battlecon. Battlecon I is... I forgot all about Battlecon. <laughs> I've never played it. Oh, my God. It is, if you've played Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, any of those those side-scroller uh, fighter games, it is it is essentially that, the best iteration of that um, that I can think of. Probably the only at this point. But I've, pl I've been playing it a lot lately. Just I'm trying to get ready to do a, a run through for it. So my friend and I are getting like getting our three best. And there's like 58 fighters. We've done eight total. <laughs> uh, yeah, eight. So so yeah, we have like 50 left, and they're all so far all radically different. Some and they each have their own fighting style based on your preference. I do not like counterattackers because they have to take damage to dish it back, and I'm like, no, because I, at least the one, one counterattacker I was using, he didn't dish enough damage back. So I was like, no, fuck, I'm, I'm losing. I was able to win, but it's all depending on who you're fighting too. My other complaint, my big complaint about that game, besides not being able, is it's a little tough to figure out a new fighter. That is true. They should have had kind of a little on the little sleeve that holds each character, mm -hmm. like a little like summary of tactics for that fighter, kind of. Like card, like combinations you could do. Like, um, yeah, just a basic yeah. summary of the way to use that fighter. Well, they kind of, they don't, they don't have like a, a card layout, like a, like a combo list is what you're thinking of, but they do have, you know, the picture on the back explains what they're about. So right, they're kind of, I mean, like, there's still like there's ways to miss abilities and like you can true. overlook stuff and not quite but notice. I mean, that, but that's the same thing of like if you're playing Mortal Kombat and you, you pick a new fighter and you're like I don't true. know anything about this kid and you slowly figure it out and what I mean I don't know is uh, the the actual game one game is three rounds so what my friend and I've been doing is we're, the first round is us kind of figuring it out and you don't really have a you don't have like eighty cards to go through you have that is true eight or ten ten right. cards total. Um, they are, so you you have five special cards and the rest are the normal you know grab dive attack and stuff like that. So you just have five cards to kind of figure out and then you slowly. So round one is normally what any fighter game is. is you're like uh, I think this is the move, and then round two and three if it goes to three is oh now I know how to fight and then it changes based on who you're fighting. So I can take the same character and my, how I will play that character changes on which character I'm fighting. True. It's it almost I I fought like really, really hard good. to make it my number I it was almost my number one and honestly the more I play it the more it, it probably will be um, but there's so much to that that's probably my complaint is that I was overwhelmed when I did the unboxing for it I was like oh because they have like a stack of weapons you can get that add to it it's they ridiculous. have they have strikers so I don't know if you ever play any fighter game you know if you're doing two v two you can do a combo where like your partner right, will come right, in and right. attack and yeah. and leave Marvel Cap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you that that's in the game, right, right. Um, and but so far right now, the first girl that I ever played uh, Fletcher against is still one of my favorites, and it's probably because I know her the best. I know how to play her. But there's another character that is her wolf. He's actually a, a werewolf, so he changes. Uh, he's a separate character, and I'm really good with him too. And so I have, they're my tag team right now, and I need to find a third person. And I just played. I just did another one that I really liked him too. So cool. it's it's brilliant. I love it. So that's Balacon, my number two. Great couples get no, it's not. My number two 
Zaya with the expansion. You're kidding at two. What's your great? Really, right. I love it's my my number one Twilight Imperium. And again, two people. right? <laughs> it's kind of like Firefly because they're similar. I like Zaya with three and four, but I love Zaya with two. Okay. I really enjoy Zaya with three and four, but I love playing it with two. You don't think it's too big? Because like that game, you benefit greatly. It's only as big as you explore. Oh, I guess that's true. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, it's not just so if you're, all there. So if you're going for the exploration, you're going to explore and make it big, which just kind of gives the opponent more playground area to do stuff in. So it's kind of that's not to your true. advantage yeah. to give them too much stuff on your actions. That's true. That, yeah, I forgot that you have to explore it. Like, you can either prep to see what's out, or you can blindly and go with in the, the expansion. They the add the, the economy into the game. Okay. So you can't spam short trade routes anymore. Oh, the, I remember that was a problem. The economy in the well, game that was also fixes too. that completely. Really? Okay. Um, the comet in the game, the little space station with the expansion, amazing in a two-player game. They add extra AI to a lot of stuff. They make it a lot smoother. Did they fix the weird backwards die rolling, where if you're mining for resources, the higher you roll, the, that's how much damage you take? Did they? Because I think that was one of the rules. Like if you're if you're going into like a, a, a nebula or something to mine, I think it, it was something like that. And it was like you have to roll a one to three to get one item. And if you roll higher, if you roll four or to ten, whatever you roll was how much damage you took. Like if you I, roll I a, never mess around with the nebulas. Okay. <laughs> and honestly, with the expansion, they added a lot of stuff to make that a lot better. Okay. To where. There's stuff that I think they fixed it to where it's the lower rolls now, and you're aiming for a target that, number that that's higher. More sense. Because they added little single square things, like little single space things that add to your inventory. Your you can upgrade your engines now, so that it's not a random roll to move. Like oh, for yeah. each upgrade on your engine, it increases your minimum dice, like your minimum number by one for each upgrade on it. Okay. Yeah. So cool. and then your weapons can do the same thing. Your shields you can get the same upgrades for. You can get um, armor plating, which takes up one inventory slot, but it adds three hit points for that one inventory slot. Or you can add extra shuttle space, oh, like storage space. Mm -hmm. So uh, same thing, like it takes up one room and it adds three extra storage on there. Or you can still store on the one that you're using. Right. right. And then the same with the shield is you can still damage the one that's there, but once you damage the one that's connecting, it like breaks off. Yeah. Yeah, um, that, I mean, they, they, really, they really did a lot well of things done right with the expansion game. now. And is the expansion out? I mean, obviously, I got it. Yeah, had to have it. Yeah, it just is getting. It's just getting um, shipped and, and fulfilled now. Oh, you got it on Kickstarter. Yeah. Okay, so you just got your scent. It's probably not on the market. No. To, okay. We'll have to play it with with the expansion because I did like the game and I got kicked ass at it. I've never played that. It's yeah. great. It's it, it, they do a lot of things with right. Coins. I mean, comes and it does come coins. and. Each ship and upgrade has, has its little mini. Mm -hmm. It's not just pretend, so uh, that's a good one. All right, so we're on number ones. Are so we guessing? We are guessing. We are guessing. So both of you get a chance to guess my number one. number one. Is? Or do you want me to guess first? I'm going off of his greatest of all time. Seth's best, his best two-player game. <laughs> yep, I think you probably got it. <laughs> He probably thinks Talisman is best two-player. No, I do not. It is awful. <laughs> I'm going with Onitama. Onitama? I would guess you're probably right. It is Onitama. <coughs> Onitama is, is my number one. Um, I actually have the expansion coming now, and I'm so excited. Uh, a game John introduced me to. Um, it's amazing. It is so good. Basically, because I hate chess, and it, it's pretty much that, but with variety. So... Like, with the different abilities, there's so much strategy to it. plays it 15 minutes. Well, no, I have played a longer game, but that was just because we were, like, really, uh, like... If you play it right, it yeah. plays in 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I have beaten you in 15 minutes every time. <laughs> right. Every yeah. single time. Every single time. <laughs> no, but there are those cards where you're sitting there that you just hoard the entire game because you're like, I'm not going to let you get that card because if you get it, then that's going to suck because it's really good. And so the last game I played of it was like, yeah, it was, maybe it was probably like 15, 20 minutes, and I won with that card the first time it was used in the entire game. Because what you do is you have five, yeah, two, eight, on, each yeah, side, one two on each side, and it's the, the shapes of whatever, yeah, Japanese or Chinese symbols, 
that each piece can do, and there's two ways to win. You can either kill the kill their king or land on their throne. Um, and so it, the movements are unique, and it adds just this whole new layer of depth to this game and the, and the board. And really whatever cool. move you use for your turn you is what's to available to your opponent for the next turn. Yep, yep. So you have two, and there's one in the middle. When you use one, you take the one in the middle and, and swap, and swap the one, the one you that use. you just used. So then, so not only are you thinking about what you can do, you have to think about what they can do with your cards. And so you're pretty much actually playing for both, <laughs> yeah. both players the entire time. You are thinking ahead on, I'm going to use this one. They're probably going to use that one. So mm -hmm. whenever I do my next move, I need to use. And you're thinking four or five moves in advance when yep. you play it. And I absolutely love it. Um, like I said, it was a real struggle to decide between Balakon and Onitama. I like Onitama more because of the level strategy to it, but probably Balakon will replace it. Um, but at this moment, Onitama is my number one. Can you go to you? Do you know what his number? I have a couple guesses, but I'm going to I'm gonna say Netrunner. Okay. I'm gonna say Onitama. Struggle. Oh, one. Really? <laughs> it is my all-time favorite two-player game ever made. I will play first or second edition, but I prefer the second edition. They streamlined a lot of the clunkiness out of the first edition. It's still kind of clunky, a little bit. It's, maybe, it's maybe. clunky in a good way. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a good kind of clunky now. It's clunky enough because it can get so in-depth and so detailed on either side. I love attacking more, but it's just because you really have to pre-plan and think your strategy up. And it's not as reactive, but I still love defending because you are literally just just trying to figure out what they're going to do and best most most intelligent way to spend your time to try to counter their plans because time is a really valuable resource. And if the attacker plays correctly, they don't give you enough time to react to what they're doing. But they're but, also not getting enough to do. Right, but with the balance of that is they're not getting enough oomph to break through your walls right. if they're not spending enough time to do it. And what sucks is that the defender only needs time because they'll win at seven rounds. Seven rounds. Now, I love it. It's such a back and forth. Stress. You can, fast. as the defender, you can send people out to throw extra miss cards into the catapult decks and mm -hmm. the ballista decks that normally would just get the discard or the misses discarded out. And then it's just, it's genius. It's beautifully designed. I want more expansions for the second edition. I want the Undead thing to come out. I know, I want the Undead. Forever. I want expansion and Undead expansion. For I want all of that to come out. Yeah. I want it all. Yeah, yeah. I do too. It just, I mean. They, and I want new stuff too. It is not a easy game to teach people though. Big Nasty, whatever. Big Nasty, yeah, Trevor, Trevor check. Yeah. Um, he yeah. really needs to start working on a third expansion for it, honestly. Get yeah. those other two churned out, have the third one in, in line just in time. Quit working on 51st State for now. <laughs> You've got enough stuff out right. for it. Throw us more stuff for Stronghold. I agree. I agree. It is It is really good. We need to play it. All right. Netrunner is my guess. That's what we're going to be my guess for every top ten. <laughs> top ten publishers. Netrunner. Netrunner is the best publisher. <laughs> I would have to say Netrunner, but it's too it's too obvious. Right. Because you play mainly family and family games. Checkers. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be like Chad. Uno? That's <laughs> <laughs> an old card game. Like, yeah. you know. Rummy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Domino's? <laughs> Alright, what's your guess? Um, realistically. Oh man. Was Santorini on your list? I'm going to say Santorini. Nope. I sold Santorini. So yeah, you'll so sell it for yeah. profit. You don't mean you sell it just because <laughs> you true. like it. Uh, it's not runner. Yeah, okay. Is it not runner? Yeah, I got one. I mean, I, it was kind of, it's kind of it seemed too obvious. obvious one. It's, it's, uh, I travel everywhere competitively for it and, and uh, have everything for it. I've been playing it since the game came out. I really love Terminal Directive. Yeah, it is a blast. Did you guys finish it? No. We're getting close. Okay. Um, Have you won any games yet? I've won a couple. A couple oh, now. Yeah. So, finally. Um, like all the benefits well, that they gave you for losing. Well, well, the thing is, is it's like, he, he just started, you know. I've he has just hit my power curve now. I've, I've been playing for years. Yeah. So, 
that we're gonna, he's going to buy the but next box set. We're going to play that he's going to be the opposite corp and I'm going to be the opposite runner. But it, it comes with cards, right? So, yeah. like, you don't use your own. Yeah, you have to use a core set with it. Oh, core that's set. right. Right, that's right. But, but the terminal directive comes with, with two core. Okay. Two corp, two runner. So, okay. We each chose a corp and a runner, and then he's going to buy a set. That's, play what, that's why, because you play. Okay. But he as knows, you play, you modify and you But he knows now. I mean, he's the, every game he plays, he's getting mm -hmm. better at it. Um, so I'm not, I'm not taking it easy anymore. And it's still the games are really close most okay. of the time. You know, it's. Um, I, I definitely could feel when he turned up the the difficulty. <laughs> it, on was, me. it was it was one of those games. <laughs> Thank though, God. Like, oh. like about a year ago. It kind of got um, really shifted power wise to one side, mm -hmm. and a lot, of, and that's what we're recovering from right now. A lot of people left the game because of that. Gotcha. Because um, I used to have a pretty good group in Joplin and Pittsburgh and stuff like that, and <laughs> they all quit. Um, so I have to travel to Kansas City, Springfield, right, right. to play. That's why I'm trying to get John in and stuff. I'm now. loving it. I've been right. playing. Um, I did like it. I did have a fun time playing. I mean, so, even though right. like, I sucked. <laughs> but, but they have a new lead designer now that came on about two, okay. two, two, three months ago, and he's really he's coming out with new restricted lists and stuff, and he's really gotten it in a positive light again. There you go. Um, and it's really taken off, which is good. So for how much you're involved, it, it probably sucked. It probably like. It made you uneasy when everyone left. And you're like, oh, yeah, and I had all this. <laughs> my life. I had all, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, because I, I remember buying, I got three core sets, like, shortly after Gen Con that year it came out, and it's just been going ever since, and uh, he's catching up, he's finding out. You yes. see they're getting ready to do a big rotation, so here in probably about two or three months, they have two more packs to come out. So you're going to learn and all then, that, and, and you're going to kick it that. Well, then yeah. the whole first two cycles will be well, out the whole meta is going to shift, honestly. Yeah. So, so everyone's going to have to learn. Yeah, I'll have to. A lot of the, the decks core speak. stuff that they've been relying on is so, going to be taken out. So Okay. It's kind so of a good thing for me, in a way. Right. And it very makes the game fresh. I think that's what this terminal directive, the, the campaign thing, did I'm for loving me. that. Yeah. Because it's just normally you're just playing back and forth. Kind of right. Back and forth this one process the story into it and stuff. So it's, it's pretty cool. All right. Nice. So that's it, everyone. That is our top 10 two player games loosely. Um, let us know what your top 10 two player games are, or what your favorite two player games are in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful with every time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you want to support us, you can go ahead and click that link to go to my Patreon account. If you have any suggestions, you can go ahead and click the link in the show notes below to go to my board game Geek, Geek List. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.